I, 33 male. Just found out my fiancé, 29 female of 9 years cheated on me for several years, need advice. Since we were 24 and 20 years old, respectively, my girlfriend, Heather, and I had been together for a long time. Bert I met when she started working at my place of business, and we hit it off almost immediately. After a few months, we decided to move in together and had a happy three-year relationship. Several years ago, when I was 28, I was offered a fantastic career opportunity out of state. It came at an excellent time since our lease was about to expire, so I took the offer. While Heather had originally intended to join me, she chose to stay behind to aid her family in caring for her elderly grandma. I appreciate her decision. After her grandmother passed away, she was burdened with a slew of extra family responsibilities that prevented her from permanently joining me. My absence from the country lasted over four years, but we maintained a long distance, what I felt to be, committed relationship during the time I was away, with her sometimes living with me for many months at a time. This evening, I decided to finish off my Christmas shopping and remembered that Heather had said in an email earlier this year that she was interested in purchasing a certain camera lens, but that she needed to pay off some debt first. But even though I didn't have access to that email account anymore, I thought I'd do what a wonderful lover would do and find a way to give her the expensive gift I knew she'd like, so I checked to see if she still had the email in her sent folder. I didn't think it was an invasion of privacy since we were living together again and sharing everything but I subsequently learned that she had been cheating on me for almost the entire time I was away. I'm completely and totally upset. After some investigation, I'd come to the conclusion that she cheated on me. According to what I can determine, the guy resides out of state, and based on their communication, I don't think they really met. There were films of him and jerking it off, nasty garbage she gave him, intimate chats, future plans and other such things in her email inbox. What frustrates me the most is that she has retained screenshots and audio recordings of Skype conversations and other activities that they have engaged in, for what reason I am not sure, but it is clear to me that she previously had a romantic interest in this person, which I find disturbing. It seems that their relationship ended at least a year ago, after spending the previous five-plus hours obsessively looking through all of her personal information while she sleeps like a dirty monster. That makes logical given the fact that it happened not long after I returned to the city. Now that I'm aware of everything, it all seems so obvious, and I feel like a complete stupid. Only when she was too drowsy to communicate or too preoccupied with family concerns did she engage in conversation with that jerk. I'm completely at a loss on what to do. We just recently moved into our new house together this summer. We have dogs together. Our finances are all connected. We're traveling in a few days to spend a week with my family for Christmas, and then a week with her family, and our wedding is set to take place in the fall of next year. In the world, what exactly am I expected to do? Is it feasible that counseling will assist us in overcoming this situation? It makes me wish I hadn't found out about this since it would wreck my whole life, but I also know that I will never be able to look at her the same way again. So, should I just complain about it in secret for the next several weeks in order to prevent destroying our family's Christmas celebrations, and then deal with it later? Even though I loathe my fiancé right now, she's been everything I've ever loved for the last nine years, and if there's a way to make this work, I'm willing to try. I just don't know how I'll ever forget the conversations they had. I'm angry right now, but I don't want to make any rash decisions. Update. While writing the Reddit post, I started drinking, and after continuing to drink while reading your guys' comments, I was in no position to drive anywhere, so I elected to crash on the couch. I was able to get in touch with my boss first thing in the morning, and he was kind enough to enable me to begin my Christmas vacation two days earlier than planned. The fact that an issue had occurred that would entail my cancelling my wedding was all I needed to tell him, and he didn't want any more explanation on my part. As my fiancé got ready for work and departed for work, I pretended to be asleep on the couch. She tried to wake me from my sleep in order to inquire about the booze-slash-couch-slash-work situation but I pretended to be weary and whispered that I'd send her an email later. As soon as she departed, I went to work, to acquire printer ink and a new flash drive. I dashed to our local store, then to our local bank to transfer half of the funds from our joint checking slash savings account into my personal account. In my apartment, I printed off multiple of her harmful conversations slash screenshots, as well as a few still images of that guy jerking off, and placed them all on a flash drive along with other photographs, films, audio recordings, and other materials. 
I was able to arrange for the cancellation or transfer of several of our credit cards, insurance policies, and other financial assets into my sole name, which was quite helpful. We are fortunate in that we pay off our credit cards on a monthly basis, so shutting them was not a concern. As ludicrous as it may seem, one of the most important things on my mind was the well-being of my two dogs. I spent over two hours of my day digging through old files until I was able to find both of their adoption packets, which, despite the fact that we had adopted them together, I had completely filled out in my own name. As the last few hours before she returned home from work approached, I began packing as much of my belongings as I could into my car, leaving copies of the printouts on our coffee table in our living room, and then driving to my brother's house with my dog, cat, and all of my family's Christmas presents in tow. I meant to confront her later that evening, but I wanted to make sure that all of my important items were out of the house so that I could leave as soon as we finished talking. It's difficult, for those who are asking why I didn't just chuck her out of the window. Due to the fact that the house belonged to her family, and that we had acquired it together, I couldn't just kick her out. Unless I was in a committed relationship with her, I didn't want to be associated with that establishment. Furthermore, she is rather wealthy, so if one of us had the financial means to force the other person out of the house, she would be the one to do so on her own dime. After everything was said and done, I got a text from her asking, Are we going to talk about this? Approximately an hour after she was due to be home, and I drove home. My expectations for her reaction were not met, and I was disappointed with what I got. I was expecting her to be regretful, remorseful, or something along those lines, but she seemed completely uninterested. I could see she'd been crying, but she didn't seem to care that I was there with her. After I sat down, she informed me that she immediately saw the bank accounts in question as to what we were doing with the house. It took all I had not to lose my calm and ask her if she had anything to say about herself or why she did what she did. She apologized, but said that she no longer cared about me and that she wanted to end the relationship after the Christmas season. After we re-established our living arrangements, she seemed to anticipate that she would be content with our relationship, but I suspect that was not the case. I had no idea what I was talking about. She burst into tears when she told me that she still had feelings for the other guy, despite the fact that they had never even met before that. If I was good with it, she then told me that she would buy me out of the equity we had in our home and that I could use the money that was left in our joint accounts to purchase a new home. I couldn't believe how aloof and businesslike she seemed, considering that I had never before met her. I gave a satisfactory response and then walked away. That's how my nine-year relationship came to an end. I went back into my car and wept like a baby the whole time. Upon returning home the next day, my brother and I moved in with my parents, and I've been here since since. You were true in that my family has been amazing. Thank you very much. The use of alcohol has also shown to be really useful. Even though I have a lot of things to sort through at my house and with the rest of our belongings, that's all I have for the time being. I haven't heard from her since I left. At the very least, I'm bringing my dog and cat with me on this trip.